Welcome back to Echo Ridge, where we're closing in on Carnivore pretty quickly. It is cycle 78, and we have just under 200,000 calories to go. So this will be the episode where magic happens, as long as I don't booger it up. Let's be honest, there's a big chance that I'm going to booger something up. We're also going to continue to work on the power systems, the water systems, and as soon as we do hit Carnivore, get rid of a bunch of incubators. Because by that time, we should have our evolution chamber all set up and ready to go and it will be very important because remember right now we're feeding all the duplicates off of just evolving the critter directly out of the incubator but when we're using the evolution chamber we have to wait a minimum of 20 cycles before those eggs start rolling in so there is going to be a time after we get carnivore where we're not going to have any meat so we need to make sure all the mealwood is good to go so we have something to eat during that transitional period. All right, we only have one extra egg in here, so I think we're gonna leave it. I don't wanna trade any of these incubators over to sage hatchling eggs, even though it does appear that we have one unassigned. Okay, we're gonna do it anyways. So now we have one extra set as stone hatchlings and one extra as regular hatchling. We'll see how long that's able to last. There were a few comments by folks saying that, well, you really don't need this many incubators after the last episode where we did the math. And the reason why we do is because we're playing it extra safe. Yes, we may have some time after we hit Carnivore that we could have stretched it out by using, say, 20 incubators. But instead, I'm trying to hit Carnivore as soon as possible. For one, just to see how quickly we can do it. And for two, because the faster we're off of Carnivore, the faster we can get rid of a majority of these incubators, reclaiming all of the refined metal and saving a lot of power in the meantime. We also finished one of the holdover tasks from last episode. If you remember, we have a few different hydrogen generators connected to the spawn. The first one is running the spawn itself. And because we're using a power control station on it, we're getting a lot of extra hydrogen that otherwise would be fed to this hydrogen generator. So we have a bunch of stored up hydrogen here being fed to this hydrogen generator, which is supplying power to the rest of our base. But you still are always going to need an overflow, because if this were to get backed up and this would get backed up, the hydrogen would have nowhere else to go. In this case, we've put in a rather long gas pipe. It goes all the way up to the top of our colony. And here, it goes into this hydrogen generator. Now, it's not a lot of help, but whenever it does receive some hydrogen, it goes directly into these jumbo batteries, which should save some time from keeping the duplicates off the wheel. Speaking of which, why is the cook on the wheel? No, better! And as soon as we get 200 kilos more refined metal, we're also going to make this one a little bit better by turning this room into a power plant and starting to apply the NG's tune-up to this hydrogen generator. And yes, all the meantime, I am still sticking to my primary duties of keeping these ranches clear of eggs. It's not a glamorous job, but someone's got to do it. There's another one. Rabbits, I tell you. Which this reminds me, we're slowly going to have to start turning all of these ranches into stone hatching ranches. Not that we don't appreciate the contributions by the standard hatch, we're not going to be able to feed them sedimentary rock forever. We're already down to 42 tons, whereas we have over 200 tons of igneous rock. We finally have a little bit of extra refined metal, so we're going to take the opportunity and put a power control station right in here. This is going to allow this hydrogen generator to be even more efficient, providing 1200 watts instead of 800, hopefully keeping dupes off of the wheel. Please, wait a minute. If I were smart, I'd also put the wheels in here. All right, one second. There we go. That's a lot better. Now, we don't have NG's tune-up yet, but that aluminum was just dropped off. So whenever sulfur, and there was someone else who could also do the tune-ups. That's right gave up whenever sulfur or gave up have some time they will apply ng's tune up to the manual generators in which they will then each generate 600 watts ah look at that absolutely wonderful 1200 watts from just two wheels instead of three with the evolution chamber nearing completion we've also gotten rid of our pip corral sort of system here scooped up all the eggs and put them in here this will also help tide us over during that period when we're waiting for the hatch eggs to naturally hatch inside of the evolution chamber instead of us incubating them. Look at this, it's a beautiful trifecta. And we're still sitting at 15,000 calories worth of barbecue. 
19,000, 23,000, 27,000. We're finally getting an opportunity to go in here and dig out the rest of this aluminum. There's also a bunch of dirt sitting here. And with all this carbon dioxide sitting up there, we eventually want to get rid of it anyways. So we're just going to put some nice ladders here. And all this work is being done at a priority of four. So they only get to do it when there's absolutely nothing else to do. Which, as crazy it is, has been more often, despite the fact that we're still having to run on these wheels quite a bit. In our manner of casual digging, we have finally finally made it to the teleporters. So first things first, we'll go ahead and do an inspection. But more importantly, it means we're going to be able to get over there soon. I don't think I want to do it yet for a couple of reasons. One, we have too much stuff going on here. And two, we need them here to continue to eat their portions of the barbecue. The pips have given us a friend. This cuddle pip, once it is done being incubated, is going to help us out even more. Because the cuddle pip is going to be able to go around and hug all the incubators. I was kind of hoping we had a cuddle pip before, but I hadn't seen one until then. Not that it's going to make a big difference, because we're less than 4,000 calories away. And it's only cycle 87. And we have that barbecue already sitting in the bank. So I suppose now we're able to evaluate our earlier decision about whether or not we really did need to take those six hatchling eggs from the pod. While I believe they definitely got us kick-started, with it only being cycle 87, we had plenty of time and we could have just passed on them. That's right. Chew. Chew, my beautiful dupes. And we've done it. The dupes rejoice. I rejoice. You rejoice. Oh, thank goodness. Now the only one we really have a chance of butchering up is super sustainable, which is another reason I don't want to go use that teleporter. Because if there just happens to be a coal generator sitting over there and we discover it, I'm afraid the game's going to think that we built it. So before we go off planet, we're going to make sure we hit super sustainable just to make sure. But now we can do something that I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. Deconstructing everything. Oh, yes. Goodbye. That poor cuddle pip, they wanted to help out so much. Well, they still will be able to. And here's why. We didn't just need the five ranches worth of hatches for carnivore. We're actually using it as a food source on the colony. So we still need to maintain them by putting hatches back into them. We have five ranches with eight hatches each, which means every 100 cycles, we need to replace 40 hatches. An unpowered incubator is able to give us four hatches every 100 cycles, but a powered incubator is able to give us 25 hatches. So it looks like we're going to keep two Two powered incubators for our hatches and two unpowered incubators for our pips. I can't wait to watch all this cobalt and aluminum just absolutely shoot up. This was a lot. While we're doing this, we're also taking every last egg and putting it into our evolution chamber. The sooner we can get these guys hatching in some sort of regular fashion, the sooner we can get rid of all those mealwood and just sustain on barbecue. And I think we're going to end up actually getting rid of these four incubators from this location because I need to put them in their own room, but if I do that, it kind of ruins this passageway here. So I'm going to look for a new location. And we're also going around to every stable and completely converting them over to stone hatches. So when these little buggers die, they're going to all be replaced with stone hatches. In fact, if I start getting stone hatches coming through here and there's not enough room, well, we'll make some room. I can't believe we're finally done with carnivore. I don't even know what to do with myself at this point. No more watching eggs. Well, for the most part, I still have to keep these ranches clear of eggs, but that's not going to be much longer either, because the more our aluminum and cobalt go up, the more our options do. And since we've finished with all the timed sort of achievements, I don't have any problem with taking some goodies from the printing pod. For instance, this wonderful oxifern seed. I don't think we're ever going to use it, but it's nice to have. I didn't take the lobster because, well, we already have some on this planetoid. We'll just make sure they do not go extinct because we're going to need those for the critter morph achievement later. Well, not critter morph, critter whisperer. Critter Whisper is the one that you have to find and tame all of these other critters. Good egg is, I think, what I was thinking of when all you have to do is hatch a new critter more from an egg. And the Great Hall of Incubators has been deconstructed, and we're up to over four tons of aluminum and over two tons of cobalt. And that was after we created our little incubation room. 
As we said previously, we have our two powered incubators for our stone hatches, two for pips, but first we're going to at least get one cuddle pip in here, and that way the cuddle pip can do some hugging as well. And the last one we're actually saving for when we eventually find another smooth hatchling. I don't want it to end up in our evolution chamber where we eat it. We ate the last one because, well, desperate times, desperate measures, but this is the one we're going to use to get the achievement. Well, more specifically, we're going to get an entire ranch full of smooth hatchlings because we need to refine 10 tons of metal by using smooth hatches. It's probably going to be a while before that happens, quite frankly, because we just don't have a lot of ore. But regardless, we're going to keep our eyes open. And now that we do have a little bit of extra aluminum, we're going to start the process of our water tank expansion. This tank here is going to hold regular water. For one, it does us no good having it sit over here, when we could be taking all those thermals and sharing them with these two tanks. It'll also be kind of nice just to have all the water tucked away into one area. Now eventually we're going to get our hands on some thimble reed and we're going to be able to get suits. And when we do that, we're going to put this desalinator, or rather probably a couple of them, inside their corresponding tanks. Because as it stands, it's just dumping heat off into the atmosphere. The start of our modernization begins here, with some rather odd looking hatch ranches. Since the recent update that allowed the queuing at the grooming stations, I don't typically use this method. But in this case, when we're so short on metal and I want to start adding some automation, it really can't be beat. And now that we finally have the refined metal and we already have a mechatronics engineer, we're going to go ahead and implement this system. Now, these two ugly ducklings are not going to be here forever. This here is on the right level, but this one is not and it's got to go away. All of this sort of got bumped down in the emergencies that were in the first 40 cycles. We're also going to need to find a new place to house our pips, but all this is eventually going to go. Something else I'm doing in the background is this little setup here. One of our future achievements that we're going to be shooting for is get a room. And one of those requirements is to have a nature reserve. Well, there just happens to be a setup that I really enjoy that could help out both the dupes and our achievement run. But it's going to take a little bit of assistance from our wonderful pips here. Now I'm using the wonderful priority zero mod to make sure that the dupes never come and build these ladders. And because of that, the pips are not going to end up planting there. We're also going to finally resume research, starting with solid transport. Because with solid transport means we're no longer going to have to manually pick up all these eggs. And boy, am I looking forward to that. Well, all that beautiful aluminum ore that we had, it's pretty much gone. We're at almost nine tons. And running this rail and installing what's going to be some ranch automation has cost us about seven tons. So far, this pip does not want to plant anything here. And I think the reason why is because I was given it mirth leaf and mirth leaf only likes 20 to 50 degree temperatures really finicky plants they are so i think we're gonna move this idea somewhere else and it's probably gonna be in this area here now it's gonna take a little while but we're currently draining this water tank here once it's completely drained we're gonna be able to set up some more permanent barracks and our shower nature reserve. We have plenty of natural tiles still here, so we don't have to do any funny business. We'll let the pips plant some stuff up here, and then we'll move a couple of barracks around, and that'll be that. After that drains, all this water is then gonna be hooked back to this line to supply all of our water to our spawn. Now, we still don't have the metal to pull this off, but eventually we're gonna have some sort of radiator system that's gonna go all the way through this. We're also gonna drop the floor of it probably down to maybe here, but that'll come later too once we've managed to drain all of this salt water and tie in this saltwater geyser here. All right, I'm genuinely confused what colony achievement we just earned. Place your bets. Here we go. Turn of the century. Really? That's the one I was confused about? So far, we've managed to collect all the water out of here. So now we're going to do some more moving things around, dropping this liquid pump, and that way we can drain all this salt water too. In fact, it might even be better just to dig all the way down and put the pump here. And with this many pumps now on that line, we're actually going to have to upgrade this whole system to conductive wire which is not something I'm looking forward to. But I'll bet you I can clean this up a little bit so we're not being quite so wasteful. Also in the retrofit queue is we've gotten rid of this hatch ranch and it is going to move over here except we're just going to wait to fill it with stone hatches. Like I said, we're not going to be able to rely on these eggs for a little while anyways and we're currently churning out some stone hatchlings. And I think I'm actually going to leave this last ranch here although it's going to need to change over a little bit. Well, we've done it again. Hopefully Eric managed to deconstruct all those tiles before they have to go pee. Come on, buddy, you got it. Look at this. Eric has built their way to freedom. 
Nice job. So this is looking a lot better. We were able to save a little bit of aluminum. What I think we're going to do when we have the liquid pump all the way down here, we're going to run it sort of locally off of a couple of wheels. That way we don't have to pay the metal cost to tie it into one of these grids. Additionally, the water tank system is turned over. This pump is now supplying all of the water for our oxygen, which means all this space can be reclaimed. And I told you we're going to be doing something a little interesting with this ranch, and that's what we did. It's literally just flipped. We still have our 96 tiles. The difference being, though, is this supply teleporter output and the lab desk aren't going to get in the way of us being able to squish the hatches in a little tight. This fifth ranch already has three stone hatchlings in it, and next on the agenda is going to be moving the pip farm. Now, I'm not exactly sure where we're going to move it. We may use the natural tile trick to put down some natural tiles for the trees to grow in, or we might use some space up and over here. We still have a little bit of room, and we don't need a huge pip ranch, nor do we need to naturally plant too many trees. And as predicted, we are living solely on the backs of pickled meal, and it'll be like this for a little while. Right now, there's 32 eggs in our evolution chamber, and what was sort of holding it back for a little bit was the automation of getting the eggs out of the ranches. Now that the ranches are finished and everything is good, we should be laying a lot more eggs. And then finally, our carbon dioxide trick of just letting it drop down here and freeze has stopped working. Not that you can tell from the temperature overlay, but it's no longer cold enough down here to be able to freeze the carbon dioxide. So that's something else we're going to have to deal with. But all that is going to have to wait till next episode. I can't wait to read what everybody thinks about us reaching Carnivore and the fact that we completed it at cycle 87, but you can bet your bottom dollar there's still going to be a lot of opinions about those six hatchling eggs. Regardless, I am very happy to be done with the achievement where we can finally stretch our legs and get into the business of making this a proper colony. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.